Hey ladies and gentlemen, Eric Mintel, Bill Burns. We're here in Jim Thorpe. We're here to investigate the ghost that still lingers right here at the Macho Opera House. My name is Eric Mintel. By night, I'm a professional jazz musician. But by even later at night, I investigate the paranormal. I, along with my team at Bucks County Paranormal Investigations, travel the country investigating all things paranormal. This is Bucks County Paranormal Investigations. On a beautiful Monday morning here in Bucks County, Bill and I travel to Jim Thorpe to investigate the Machunk Opera House. Hi, my name is Vince DeJosio. I'm one of the producers here at the Machunk Opera House. We first started producing shows here in 2003. The Opera House was built in, in, 18, in 1881, and it's primarily a vaudeville theater. And in the 20s, the uh, Capitol Theater took it over, turned it into a silent movie house, and they reconfigured some of the uh, space here and made it more suitable for movies. Uh, the uh, ghost story that is most often told is that up here, uh, back there by the projection booth, uh, that remains, uh, is one of the remaining architectural details of this place. Uh, there was a projectionist that tried very hard uh, and doggedly to uh, keep the place open. Presumably his ghost uh, still occupies uh, this uh, opera house. And the Mock Chunk Opera House was primarily just a community theater venue and I had known the president of the Historical Society who was operating it at the time and um, asked her if she'd like to do a show here on the first Friday after the galleries closed. And she said, sure, we'd be into it, you know, we could use the funds and that's how it all started. Friends of mine who had a uh, tribute act, or they didn't have a tribute act, but they were doing a Simon and Garfunkel show. And I said, hey, this might be a perfect opportunity, you know. We were all traveling around doing singer-songwriter things and um, <laughs> That's how our first show began, and here we are as a nationally recognized concert venue. And I've been here working, you know, late nights, doing things. We, we did a lot of things in the beginning because funding was pretty tight, so we did everything. And I would be here late at night. I never felt any, any paranormal energy. Um, I always felt sort of comfortable here. I never really experienced many, uh, any issues over here as far as paranormal goes. But I do remember one incident, and I could still remember it. A couple of spirits, uh, at least, uh, seemed to occupy this area. I saw what I thought was a woman in a long dress, standing casually up against the wall of the, stair the, the hallway that comes into the balcony. And I thought that maybe she was waiting for somebody or lost something up here. And she was, looked like to be about 5'7". She was, she was kind of tall. So when I came back in, I noticed she was gone, and there's only two points of exit. And I would have heard a door opening and closing. So I went to the most logical exit, which most people do go out, you know. And I went over there, and there was nobody going down the steps, because I figured at that time, I would at least, so unless she jumped off the, the fire escape or ran down there, I would have seen it. And then I immediately walked very fast over to the other exit, and both of those doors were closed, and nobody was down there. When you looked around, after having seen that figure and then looked back to see it, and the figure was gone, how did that make you feel? Well, I felt like for the first time in 16 years, I've seen something here, and I couldn't explain it, and it really, it really, at that moment, I felt, wow, there might actually be some truth to what is looming around this area of energy. So uh, this is the projection room, Wow! <laughs> and uh, it's very, uh, we spent a lot of time up here and it's very genuine. That also is the stairwell up to the attic, mm. which uh, when we put the new roof on like about 10 years ago, um, the civil engineer said, wow, an incredible bit of handiwork up there, mm -hmm. um, but also uh, various uh, groups that we have had here have said that they feel like rushing air in here sometimes. As Dan tells us about the projectionist room, you can clearly see an orb that comes between me and Bill. Look closely. And 
you know, things like that. So maybe uh, Vince uh, can tell you more Vince things about more that. Lines. And you've heard ghost stories about this place before, right? I did. I heard, uh, well, there were two two particular instances when we had uh, A&E in here with uh, psychic kids and both of the children said they felt a presence up here and they saw a figure. Upon reviewing the footage, we notice two orbs that literally fly up from Vince's head. Take a look. And, and you actually saw it yourself? I did. <laughs> I thought I did. I mean, I was, you know. And these are the two points, right? Right here. Yeah, you can just only go with this door and that door. And just these two doors, okay. Wow. Vince just told us some compelling information. I can't wait to get on this investigation. Have any strange noises emanated from up there? Um, not that I have heard, but maybe Vince has. Hmm. Hey, Bill, look at this. Look at this. This is fascinating. Wow. I mean, this Check is this a real out. piece of American history. Hey, wait a minute, wait a minute. Look at this. Look at this. That's unbelievable. Look sure, this. it's a what handmade, is this is a handmade doll. Wow. Easily over 100 years old. Did you know that this, this was here? No, uh, and uh, wow. uh, probably, I, I don't believe that our historical society knew it was here. And uh, who knows? I mean, maybe it that is amazing. kind of appeared there. I mean, uh, you know, anything could, could happen here, obviously. A piece of American but, uh, history right here. About two in the morning or something, I was by myself, and I'm just painting the floor. And then I thought, you know, somebody's, it feels like somebody is looking over my shoulder. Maybe I've had too much paint fumes <laughs> and things like that, and it's getting late, so I decided to, to go home. It's funny because, you know, again, from what Vince told us, right, he, he saw that maybe it was the woman looking over the balcony. I took a moment to play the beautiful Chickering Grand Piano at the Opera House to see if we could summon some spooky spirits. heard that there's an underground stream that runs through under the basement? Sure, I can show you that. Well, the, the funny part about that is I have this weird feeling that if there is a Phantom of the Opera House That's where it's at. He's gliding That's along that stream. Let's take a look at the I stream. wouldn't blame him. Let's go. <laughs> Dan gives us a quick tour of the backstage showing us all of the signatures of all the artists that have performed over the years, including the Eric Mintel Quartet. You'll see some uh, grates. Wow. And uh, that's, that's the rates goes right there. Yep. That's what yep. we're hearing right now? Yeah. Wow. It's like a it's like a round uh, you know, a tunnel. Holy moly. And he went, <laughs> next time, next time. We don't have yeah. our waiters. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> you know, really. And I also want to thank Lab212. We've got Patrick Lilly, Lizzie Cates filming today. Thank you so much. Of and uh, we're on to the next case. The team heads back into the projection room to start the investigation. Eric, let's just test that and see if that's actually picking up something. You so, got it. Well, here's the panel. Here's the power panel. Look at, look at how much, look at how much it spikes here. So that's working. It's definitely working. He had his projection booth here, looking out to the screen over there. And he worked so hard to try to keep this theater rolling and running and. And that would explain, by the way, the whole point of why would a ghost stay. Why would a spirit not leave this plane? Exactly. And what because he felt that he had something to do. And I'm wondering if maybe the ghost that Vince saw could have been his wife. Could be. I or mean, a girlfriend, or, or who knows. They tried to keep this theater open. They failed, get turned into a warehouse. Right. So maybe they're still here monitoring this theater. Well, why don't you try an EVP? All right, let's see what happens. We're here in the projectionist room, and are you here? Is the projectionist here with us? We don't know your name, but maybe you could let us give us a sign that you're here. Let's give us a sign that you're here. As I asked if the projectionist was here with us, you could hear what sounds like a projector click. Listen closely. Give us a sign that you're here.
Can you tell us your name? Bill and Eric decide to go over to the area Vince saw the figure and put an EMF detector on it. Yeah, there's a hot spot right here. So whatever that hot spot was, whatever they saw corresponds to the electronic reading you're getting on your device. Wow. Why don't you also take a look at your EVP and see if there's anything in this area that you can pick up. We are here at the Machunk Opera House. Um, are you the woman that was waiting on this wall that Vince said he saw? Are you here? If you're here, let us know. Give us a sign. The team wraps up the investigation with more questions than answers. Vince, I want to thank you so much. I you welcome here. Thank you for showing us around, and thank you for all your hard work for making this a major destination in the country for music, arts, entertainment. You guys are doing a phenomenal job. Dan, thank you. Pleasure. Thank you so much, man. Vince, thank Pleasure. you very much. What, what, you, what a great story. Great meeting you guys. All right, Fabulous. Meeting you too. What a great story, man. We got our, we got our work cut out for us. But we will be back again. Thank you so much. Thank you. 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 Thank you.